Charles, um, thank you so much for um, inviting Druitt to, to hold your sale. Um, I've known you for so many years. It's a real honour to, to have this sale. And I've always been struck by your eye and your vision. And really, you have a vision like no other. Well, thank you, Brandon. That's a very, very nice compliment. I, I, I do have a vision insofar as that I um, have this idea of symmetry. And symmetry comes from some of my studies at Cambridge, which have to do with early neoclassicism from about 1760 to 1840, but it, it combines architecture and art. And one of the main objectives of neoclassicism, of course, is symmetry. And you'll probably note in some of the photographs of, of my uh, townhouse in, in London, so many of the objects have a, a, the symmetry that's inviting and, and it has an architectural element to it. I um, studied architectural history which led me on to becoming um, um, an art dealer uh, for the sheer fact that um, I couldn't get a job anywhere else or no one else would hire me um, <laughs> in the museum world. So I decided to go on to becoming a dealer. This whole idea of the thrill of the chase, of the hunt for these magical drawings um, has, has been an inspiration for me and for my career. One has to remember that things are drawn first. Uh, whether it's uh, you know porcelain or curtains or interiors, there's usually a drawing for it before it's ever implemented. And that's what I find so interesting, is the first thought that someone has of a design or an idea for, for a design is in these drawings. There's sort of an allure to, to, to some of these things. And, and as you say, um, combining them on a wall, it doesn't necessarily mean the one in the middle is the most important or the one to the right is most important. It's the collectiveness of it all, and, and it makes an impact like no other. I've um, fairly recently been doing exhibitions on the West Coast in America, and many of them have never seen me before, so they're, they're all struck by this idea of combining a um, hundred pictures on, on a wall that they would only ever think that you should have five or six. But that's it. It's that sense that, you know, I remember you telling me that, you know, clients would come in and, you know, buy, buy a whole wall and, and replicate that at home. And, and I mean, that's something that there's this opportunity with this sale to do. I did have one client in Canada and she came and she had this gigantic bookcase designed by Robert Adam and needed to fill it with something of some merit. And she she bought 47 pictures for me and filled wow. them all with stands and <laughs> and, uh, and it was, and it looked, it looked really charming. Yeah. It, it made the, the already important bookcase look that much more interesting. And yeah. there's another point, um, which is quite an important one in this sale, is um, the collection of design drawings, which are available, which um, are quite rarities because so many of these drawings today are in public collections, such as the Cooper Hewitt, the Met, the v &A, the British Museum. And um, these collections, of course, are, uh, include many things that are going to be in the sale, including design drawings for lighting and porcelain and, and indeed the cannons. There's also tollware tray designs. There, there are a few interior drawings also which show uh, existing interiors or perhaps designs for them. And then, of course, we have, have stage set designs and ceiling designs and clock designs. There's even a beautiful drawing, um, an Austrian drawing, for enamel boxes. And then going back to the idea of architecture, the, there's that wonderful drawing that had belonged to, I had sold it years ago to Yves Saint Laurent, and he um, liked it and, and reframed it in a, in a rather um, drab way. And I've, I've subsequently reframed it um, in this beautiful period maple frame. It's of, of an Arc de Triomphe, and it's, um, it, it's a beautiful object. It's quite large for, for, for um, a drawing of that period, too. Druids has been um, very crafty and shrewd with their estimates. I think that they're um, going to be very attractive to people wanting to buy because I think they're lauded up in an interesting way that will make them very um, approachable and saleable and, and certainly viable for, for Druids clients and my own. Um, I, I want to point out that you know, young dealers can do this today. They, they, can, they too can start with not necessarily a Louis Vuitton trunk, but could start with maybe a small watercolor or a small piece of porcelain and start building up um, an inventory, building up clients, building up um, relationships. Um, relationships not only with um, the dealers or the clients, but with the objects themselves. And those objects can become friends or sometimes perhaps enemies 
Um, but you get to enjoy them, and you get to live with them for a short time, and then then you sell them, which is essentially what I'm doing now. I think this this um, idea that you can you can buy them and perhaps even make some of these objects today from 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 these drawings or how they were made in the past uh, sh shows the sheer quality of the drawings and and the future for us to collect.